Okay, many people have asked me um, about the details or the route that we're going to take from France across the Atlantic Ocean and to Boston, Massachusetts. So I'm going to do just a little video on um, the intended route that we plan on taking. Let's do a real quick geography lesson just so everybody kind of knows where we're at. Obviously Boston's over here on the east coast of the United States. France is over there. Azores and Bermuda. So kind of keep these four um, places in the back of your mind. So we got France, Azores, Bermuda, and Boston. Okay, this next slide is going to um, show you um, the, a straight line from Boston to France. It's 3,400 miles or 3,000 nautical miles. And so what you can see is a direct route uh, from La Rochelle, which is where the boat is in France, to Boston. We all know that uh, Mother Nature, uh, we can't uh, anticipate everything that it throws at us. So a well-planned route can certainly change once you get out in the ocean. But we have three main challenges um, as far as with the crossing. The first being uh, we are sailing against the Gulf Stream, which is the current. We are heading into the jet stream, which is the wind. And we're also in the early stages of hurricane season, which starts in June. So uh, with those three points, uh, certainly we will um, make a course based on those uh, three elements of uh, the weather. Let's take a look at this slide one more time. And as you can see, um, the 3,400 miles that if we take a direct flight, it will take six hours, or a little bit over six hours from Boston to Paris. Now, if we were to take a cruise on a passenger ship like the Queen Mary or any other typical cruise ship, uh, it'll take six to seven days to make that same crossing. Now, if you take Carnival, it might end up being 10 to 12 days, but um, and if we were to take the straight line and we had the wind behind us and the current behind us, it would take about 18 days to sail that same trip um, from France. To the Gulf Stream, which is the currents, play a pretty significant role on the difficulty of the crossing. Most people will cross from the United States or the Caribbean to Bermuda and then Bermuda to Europe or France or uh, wherever their final destination is. So we're actually doing the opposite of what probably 95% of the ocean crossings on sailboat are. So uh, the difficulty is, as you can see on this slide, uh, we have a clockwise um, rotation of the currents which come up from the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, up the east, east coast and basically out to uh, the Atlantic, way out to the Atlantic Ocean and then back down um, a little bit south of France, Portugal, down by Morocco and then you have the Canary Islands which are uh, down in this area here and then you got all the Caribbean here and then you have the Bahamas and Florida. So uh, this current is pretty um, standard and we would expect this to uh, be no different during our trip. So we uh, plan accordingly for that current. Now there's obviously other um, currents, but I'm, I'm not gonna get into the Labrador current and the North Atlantic current and all that stuff. So uh, this will be the, the um, current that we will plan for f with our crossing. This chart will actually show us the jet stream, which runs from, to keep it simple, it runs from California to the east coast and heads east and um, or northeast. So um, as you can see, we're trying to uh, get to where the jet stream is coming from, which means we would be sailing into the wind. And if you don't know anything about sailing, you can't sail directly into the wind. So uh, the, the course and route will be um, made in a, you know, with, with that in mind. 
Now, when you have both current and uh, the winds going against you, with the jet stream and the Gulf Stream, uh, let's just say you have a six knot current and you have your engine on and the boat can do six knots. Well, six knots against you, six knots forward, nullifies everything and you go in zero knots. So uh, that's why if we were to go direct into the current, uh, we're going to make very, very little progress or headway. Now, how do we come up with all this information in April and May? when we're not going to be doing the crossing until June. Well, we look at historical data from pilot charts and other resources to determine the current, the weather, the winds, and all that good stuff uh, for each month, uh, which would have been, uh, or in this, this case it's June, uh, for each location. So you break the, uh, the roots down into smaller, instead of one large one, you break it into five sections. You take a look at each section and you look at all the historical data. And it's pretty accurate. It's um, it'd be no different if I was down and somebody was coming to sail on the Cape. I would basically tell them 95% of the time in July you're going to have 80 degree weather. You're going to have two to four foot seas. You're going to have 15 to 20 knot winds in the afternoon. Uh, not a lot of wind in the morning. And um, it would probably hold true. Uh, the only thing we can't predict is squalls, hurricanes, storms. Um, bad rain um, and stuff like that but the winds and currents uh, we, we, we can pretty much predict with uh, a lot of certainty so uh, all of the information that we're able to, to gather through pilot charts and um, weather routing uh, programs and uh, when we're on the boat we'll have satellite and a satellite phone which will get daily weather reports and that'll help us be in the right place at the right time versus being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So uh, by having those daily weather charts it will give us a look ahead uh, for 24 to 48 hours so we can design a course or alter a course to uh, either pick up additional winds or uh, avoid uh, strong gusts and um, squalls and stuff like that so um, that'll come in handy for the passage also is the, um, the daily weather reports. So the first area we're going to come out of is called the Bay of Biscay and um, so when we leave France we have about a 300 mile uh, nautical mile um, passage out to the Atlantic Ocean and that there, the first 300 miles, is supposed to be uh, fairly choppy and windy, and most of the winds come out of the north, so uh, we should have um, uh, be able to trim the sails and have a good sail down to uh, the Azores. Once we head out into the Atlantic Ocean, uh, our first stop in course will be the Azores, which is part of uh, the islands off of Portugal, and my uh, by stopping there, what we're looking to do is we'll fill up with fuel, fill up with water, reprovision the boat, <clears throat> and also at that point um, we'll probably have to do the first service on the engines uh, to comply with the warranties. And uh, so we should be there probably, I'm hoping a day, but I think probably about 24 hours, but uh, I think it'll be closer to probably two days. Would I like to stay longer? Yes, but um, not, on, not on this trip. So once we leave the Azores, we're then going to head or take a course um, somewhat towards Bermuda. I'm hoping we can stay north of Bermuda and kind of cut the corner a little bit to pick up the jet stream, which will be over here. Uh, if we go to the Bermuda, it's probably going to add another two or three days to our uh, passage. So hopefully we can leave the Azores and instead of heading southwest, we can head southwest but a little more west and um, and try to cut the corner and pick up the jet stream over here and then do the last leg up to Boston but if we do have to stop in Bermuda uh, once again we'll reprovision uh, we'll, uh, we'll probably do the maintenance on the the engines fill up with diesel fill up with water and uh, get ready for the um, the final leg up to Boston 
Now you might ask why instead of when we come out of the Bay of Biscay, uh, we don't head north. Well, the first problem with north is um, the weather sucks and it'll be cold, it'll be miserable, um, but that's not the reason. Uh, once again, we have to look at the currents and the winds and uh, generally what happens is, is if we stay um, above the 37 degree north line, um, latitude line, what will happen is the westerly winds uh, come into play <clears throat> and also the Labrador current and so that's not going to help us. Now we can certainly head further up north and then come down and catch the Labrador currents and um, but uh, it's just not the best route to take and um, so we're going to scratch that idea. Uh, one other thing is once we do leave Bermuda and head up to Boston, we it's like flying in a plane. We do have to hit the uh, Customs and Immigration, and the only locations are Boston, Boston Harbor, and Gloucester Harbor. Or we could head up to New Hampshire, up to uh, Portsmouth, but um, hopefully we'll time things fairly close that we can stop in Gloucester and um, do all the paperwork and all that stuff and then we'll head out and to our final destination of Newburyport. So the question I get asked most often is how long is it going to take us? Well as I said earlier uh, 18 days if we could do it on a straight line certainly we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, my prediction is 24 days in 18 hours from dock to dock, which would be from France to Newburyport. I think it's aggressive, but um, we'll see what happens. Now, if you want to take a look at each leg uh, to see where the breakdown is, I think from France to the Azores, we're going to be probably 9 to 10 days. Um, I think from the Azores to Bermuda, we're probably going to be in the 12-day 12, 12 range, maybe. And from Bermuda up to Newburyport, I think we're going to be in the five to six day range by the time we clear customs and get into Newburyport. So, um, you know, I think once again, maybe eight to 10 days to the Azores, 12 days, 14 days to Bermuda, and then five to six days up to uh, Newburyport after we check in at customs. Well, that's our intended route. Um, and as I said earlier, that uh, weather will certainly dictate um, any course that we take uh, for the duration of the passage. And um, uh, I'd like to thank you for following. Um, I hope you follow the trip. I'll be leaving on Wednesday the 28th of this month. I will arrive in France at uh, 2 o'clock on the next day, Thursday. I will then take a four-hour train ride, high-speed train ride, to La Rochelle, France, where the boat will be. So it's going to be um, about a 28-hour journey just to get to the boat. Uh, you can take a direct flight. I'm not taking a direct flight. I'm going to Iceland first and then down to France. So, um, so it'll be a long journey, but uh, certainly uh, I've never been to France. Um, I've never been uh, to Europe uh, other than Austria, Germany, and Switzerland many, many years ago. But uh, So it should be fun. Um, so if you have any questions, shoot me an email, and I'll try to answer them either on a video, through a blog, or just direct email. So once again, I hope you guys follow me. I'm sure I'll do another blog before I leave. Um, so so um, that's about it from here. So thanks again. Oh,